Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, you. How are you? I am fantastic. I'm wonderful. How are you today? I am absolutely wonderful here in California, sunny California right now. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear it's sunny. We we are partly cloudy in Arkansas. Wow. Uh, the weather is actually, uh, it's wonderful. It, um, it's not too hot. Normally we are uh, uh, melting um, this time of year and it's um, like in the 90s and the 100s, which we've been fluctuating. Uh, but again, there's been some type of front coming through. And so we had a little rain and then a little breeze. And so um, it is actually uh, wonderful, wonderful um, in this part of the country. And yeah. so, yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I just said that's awesome. For us, summer ushered in summer. The first day of summer ushered in summer, and it has been hot. I am extremely cold blooded, but I have had the air conditioner running all day. It's hot. Yeah. It's so absolutely. hot. I haven't even went to hike. <laughs> well, that must be hot because that's yes. your favorite pastime. <laughs> yes. So, uh, welcome to the viewing audience. We want to say welcome to season two, episode two. And we're just glad that you are um, sharing with us tonight. You're viewing with us tonight. If uh, if you don't mind, we would love for you to do us a favor. Put in the chat where you're from. Um, let us know where you're viewing from. And you can also um, share with us if this is your first time um, being on um, our broadcast. And if it is, let us know so we can uh, welcome you again and thank you for coming. And then those of you that are viewing in the background, we uh, thank you equally uh, as well for sharing with us on tonight. And so tonight, um, this may be one of the most important uh, topics that we may discuss. What do you think, Yamika? What do you think about that? I am excited about this. Uh, I think that this um, sets the stage for whatever else we're going to do in our walk with Christ. I think it's very important. And I do want to just go ahead and acknowledge Allison Williams from Pasadena, California, Carla hey. Johnson, Las Vegas, Nevada, Maggie, Maggie from Los Angeles. And she says that this is her first time. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, yes, we welcome you, my sentiments exactly. And so to just give you a tidbit of what we're going to be talking about on tonight, um, our uh, overarching um topic has been identity crisis, but our tag for episode two is who am I? And basically that has to do with the whole person and, and dealing with um, who God actually made us to be and sometimes how difficult it can be to live up to who uh, God has made us to made us to be because society uh, paints that as a, a whole totally different portrait. And so sometimes what we do, we live out this this pictured life of thinking that we are our career, we are what we possess, um, we're our titles and ministry, you know, just so many things that people hinge their identity on, which really doesn't have anything to do with what God has called us to be. And, and so it's so much baggage, so much bag, baggage comes with that. And we begin to lose ourselves. And so we, we cannot identify with our authentic God self. And that's what we're talking about tonight. The yeah. episode tonight is talking about who am I? And our next um, episodes that's coming forth would be um, episode three, which is death to life, uh, learning your true identity. And then episode four, which is danger zone, um, the impact of knowing and not knowing um, who you are, knowing and not knowing who you are. So we think this is probably by far our most important season and the most important topic uh, that we've actually dealt with. And so we've already taken care of our self introductions. If you if you've been uh, rocking with us now uh, for uh, season two, you know exactly who we are. And um, and so next we're going to announce um, the person that tagged them that um, actually I tag the most. So what we do is we award people with tagging and sharing 
um, and even likes and um, and actually um, engagement. Engagement, that's the other word I'm looking for. So um, last week, uh, we are so happy to announce and we're so excited to announce that Carla Johnson, she's yeah. back tonight. Yay, yay, yay. Carla Johnson is our winner from our June 7th broadcast. And so we just want to highlight Carla Johnson right about now. Yes. Uh, Congratulations again, Carla, and we hope that you enjoy your Amazon digital gift card. We, we've already sent that forward to you, and we hope you enjoy that uh, gift card. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and conversate tonight, and Yumika is going to uh, give us a um, um, an update or a recap from our last episode. I'm going to turn it over to you, Yumika. Yes, we're just going to recap for those of you who were with us and those of you who were not what we talked about two weeks ago because we're biweekly. Um, so from our show on 6-7, um, words, the power to create. So we talked about um, our words produce and bring into existence. And we talked about that we are made in God's image and his likeness. And part of what God did in his image and his likeness is God said it and it was so. So we have the power to say things and it be so. Our words are either producing life or death. And that was extremely important because no matter what your words are producing, uh, we don't have to live in a state of confusion about who we are. God gives us the ability to have clarity and part of that clarity is framing your world with the words that you speak. There is a link between our identity and the word of God. And then the final one, my identity is my spiritual DNA and is powered by the word of God. Oh, wait, there was one more. And this one is really important. It's short, it's simple, but it just says the word works. We talk yes. about how the word works. So yeah. that was just a recap. If you were not able to join us in the last session, go back. It will be um, on our page that we just started, which is our Let's Talk About It page. Or you can go back and visit that on our YouTube page if you were not able to um, join in in our last session. Awesome. Awesome. And, uh, and so with that being said, we are going to um, jump right in, jump right in. I think that's a great segue um, for us to go go right in to talk about. Um, so let's talk about uh, who am I? Who am I? Mm -hmm. And my next question, you make. I think um, we're gonna do, we're gonna be really conversational, guys, going forward. And uh, we invite um, your engagement. We invite your likes because. Let me share one. Let me share one thing with you. And, and um, Yumika, you can uh, feel free to piggyback on this with me um, if you don't mind. To us, this is so important. When we started uh, talking about developing um, the broadcast and how we felt compelled that so many people needed the word of God, uh, we want to make sure that we get this into as many um into as, as into many feeds as we possibly can and so we need your help sharing and tagging and um and sharing and tagging again and liking it so it'll stay um in our news feed and then we're going to have a uh, an announcement at the end um uh, about something very exciting that's happening with let's talk about it we believe that god um, is really going to expand and enlarge our territory, but we can't do that without your help. We need your help. And uh, you, make a, uh, you can share um, if you like uh, there and just uh, let them know uh, your thoughts on that. Well, we're, we don't really have no thoughts other than what you said. Um, it would help us if you shared, if you like, um, 
at, you know, during the, if you tag, you know, you at and you tag somebody that's on your page. If you feel, now here's the thing. If you feel like this is a blessing to you, if you feel like there is somebody that would be empowered, some someone else that would be encouraged, tag a friend, let them know about it. If you feel like this is a blessing to you, we're not just saying just tag this and you're not blessed and you're not encouraged. But if you are encouraged, let's encourage someone else. That That's what we're saying. Right. Exactly. And I left that part out. So that's why I asked you to back up on that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so we're um, our for our topic is, do you believe what God says about you? Do you believe what God says about you? And I mean, I I um, dug so much um, into this. Um, we we tend to compartmentalize um, ourselves. We we tend to compartmentalize um, our lives and we include God in certain places where we don't include him in others. And that question uh, led me down the journey of getting uh, to the scripture of uh, First Thessalonians. And I don't I don't have that one, um, Yumika, but First Thessalonians uh, 5 and 23. And I'm based I'm not going to read it, but basically um, it says that we are um, so I mean, we are spirit, soul and body. We're spirit, soul and body. We're we're a whole person. And God deals with us as a whole individual and not as this one thing that we tend to hinge our life on. And then when we hinge our life on that thing. Our whole identity is crushed because the bottom falls out because we have um, we've we've encompassed our entire life on that thing. And so whether it be your your children, um, whether it be your career, uh, again, whether it's a ministry, if something goes awry with either one of those things, that thing that um, you have developed and and just encompass your entire life around um, your, your you fall your, your bottom, the bottom falls out. And so tonight, what we want to do is really cause you to pull back the layers. Um, who we are is hinged into so many things. And God was so intentional about making us uh, who we are, uniquely making us yeah. who, who we are. Genesis 1 and 27 says, God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. He was so intentional about how, uh, who we are and, uh, and what he intended us, intended us to be. Do you know that um, the enemy was already uh, at work during the, the create, creation of the universe, during the time that um, that God created Adam and Eve. And I'm, I'm fast forwarding this thing to show you something. And I'm dealing with Eve specifically here because Eve already had dominion. Eve already, God had already told Eve who she was, what she wasn't supposed to do and what she could do. But then we know that the enemy comes and shares something with her that she already should have known. She was already all knowing. She was already full of God. Exactly. She had already been identified um, by God as to who she was. But what the enemy done, what the enemy did rather, he came back and, it to and told her exactly what she already was. But do you know somewhere in the process, she lost sight of who and what um, she already was? That's just how the enemy works in our lives. We lose sight of lose sight of our our, our authentic self yes. um, because we're so wrapped up into um, all of the other things that we allow uh, to identify us. Mm -hmm. And um, and so you make a what um, what do you think um, you know about uh, the situation in the garden? And do you have any input that you want? Um, to place on that particular thought. Well, I, I just think that the situation in the garden um, looks like 
Um, you know, the enemy is not a creator. Nothing is new under the sun concerning him. And so the same way that he tried to kill, steal and destroy from Adam and Eve is the same way that he tries to kill, steal and destroy from us. So one of the things that he um, wanted to steal from them and one of the things that he 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 did, he did take was, um, you know, the Lord said, that he made Adam and Eve in his image and in his likeness. And part of that, he, he said he gave them dominion over the earth, dominion over the creature. He gave them dominion. And so one of the things that identity allows you to do, identity is like guardrails. Um, and I know this well, cause I can't bowl, but I, identity is like the guardrails in, in the bowling lane. So when you throw your ball, it doesn't go into the, the, the gutter. So right. yeah, does it sets up boundaries it sets up restraints it sets up um you have a goal and you have a mission and that keeps you on course and so it's the enemy's goal to take us off course because if he can get us off course that um the people that are supposed to be drawn to god through you um i'm not going to say they're not going to be drawn to god but it may be through somebody else so the thing and the per the purpose that God has for you, you'll miss it just by simply not knowing who you are in him. Right. That's awesome. I like that. And so 2 Corinthians 11 and 3 says, but I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. And so tonight, what we want to drive home is to basically let you know that your identity is wrapped in Christ and there is no way you can learn your authentic self until you uh, get into the word and allow the promises of God to become um, be, uh, to become a part of you so you can actually know who you are and that you don't um, identify or define yourself based on the world standards. Mm -hmm. Knowing um, our identity gives us strength and allows us not to fall prey to the tactics of societal norms um, and systems. And so we learn um, really quickly that society has a way of identifying us. But I want to say your identity in Christ, it all starts there. It, everything starts with knowing who you are in Christ. Um, and that's not being um, overly uh, spiritual or super yeah. religious, but it's knowing, knowing your position, knowing your posture, knowing the power, knowing that what Christ did on the cross for us. And, and I, and, and when I say that sometimes, you know, I don't want um, individuals to think that, Oh, I have to be super, you know, super spiritual, super holy to know my identity. No, you you have to definitely get into the word of God to know um, what he's actually saying. And Allison Williams, yes, when we know whose we are, we know who we are. Thank you, Allison Williams, for for sharing um, that powerful comment. And um, and so knowing, um, knowing our identity, we, we know that the mix up came um, after the fall, the mix up came after the fall. And um, in Psalms 51, five through six, surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me, yet you desired faithfulness, even in the womb, you taught me wisdom in that secret place. Do you know that God was depositing into you when you were in your mother's womb? He know that you were going to be uh, born into a world and you would and, and the world would try to shape you and identify you. But he began to drop in you a desire to want to know him um, and to and to want to uh, live a life for him and then to want to be shaped, shaping by his word, shaping uh, by who you are. Uh, by who by who he designed you to be, I mean, not by who you are, but who he designed you to be. And so if you can just wrap your head around how powerful that is to know that God already started fingerprinting you, a finger hand, your handprint, your fingerprint, the color of your eyes, how long you, the, the type of hair, the, the texture of your hair, 
the I, um, I don't think God had anything to do with the texture or the my hair. That was just my mom and dad. I just had to add that. <laughs> that would have been a little bit better to me when it comes to that. <laughs> but our, our DNA, <laughs> you make us get us off course, guys. Our, our, our DNA um, is, is, is all wrapped up, you know, into whether it started with our parents or our forefathers or and uh, mothers and things like that. It's all, it all started um, at the beginning. It, it all started at the beginning. And so um, I'm going to just go ahead and segue and um, let you Mika get, get started after she, she's told us <laughs> that God didn't have anything to do um, with, with her, with her hair and, and her no, makeup. Not. You know, the, the song said, he's a good, good father. <laughs> I see my good, good father. <laughs> but anyway, what we want to talk about a little bit of a, a give an explanation of what is identity. And um, we want to explore that because um, we have to know what that is to say that we are in an identity crisis. And this is something that is so heavy on my heart and i pray every day for believers because i know that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church and i know that he has a remnant and he will always have a remnant and that he will always have a church that's going to grow and that's going to prosper but when you look out and and you see it's like um believers are assimilating with the unbelievers Yes. And believers are being highly influenced by the non-believers and believers are taking on the identity of the world. So that's where we came up with identity crisis. Like something is going on where we should be the difference. We should be the influence. We should be setting the standard and something is happening where it's not us that's setting the standard. We are becoming followers and i don't know how many of you feel like you you see that today where um with social media and with the the even with the TikToks and the all of this like god is creative enough to give us something that identify that that bonds and that looks like our identity what it's supposed to look like that looks like our purpose um even in social media Yes. But um, identity is the qualities, the beliefs, the personality, the looks, and or the expressions that make a person. And a psychological identity relates to our self-image, our mental model of ourselves, our self-esteem, and our individuality. Yes. And so when we say crisis, we're looking at a condition of instability or a condition of danger as in like social, economic, political, international affairs, it's leading to a decisive change. It can lead to a decisive change when you realize that that you are in, in, in crisis, when you realize that this is something that is a condition that in, has instability or um, that has danger. And I'm going to go down a little bit, but anybody that knows me or has been coming on with us, know I, I have a story. And um, when I look at when I look at believers or I look at us today, um, I just feel like we are a very impressionable, like a child. How a child is so impressionable. You know, they want to do what their older siblings are doing. They want to do what their older cousins are doing. They are easily influenced and they are susceptible to any suggestion. And um, for those of you who, who have been coming on, you know that I was adopted by a bishop and um, and he let me go and visit my cousins. I was about maybe 16, 17 years old, something like that. And um, when I came home, you know, living in a bishop home, you had rules, you had a standard and all of this. And so when I came home and I went upstairs and I was just, I thought I was being me and I was just talking. And he looked at me, he said, oh, so you don't know who you are. And he said, and until you find out who you are, you can't go visit them anymore. And I was like, well, what? He said, you, you, you're not talking the same. Your vocabulary has changed. Your attitude has changed. Your, your, your presence has changed. 
That means that you went into an environment and the environment changed you instead of you changing the environment. So until you know who you are and you can go in an environment and you change it, then you can't go there anymore. And I was like, wow. But so I started learning these lessons at a young age. We as believers have to imp put the impression or put the, I have our identity to, to influence others, not take on the impressions, take on the uh, influence or take on the suggestions of others. What do you think about that, Dewana? that we are just in a state where we are just so impressionable right now? Um, absolutely. I, I think um, I'm calling it pressure. Uh, the pressure that uh, that's being received from outside forces. And then because it is not uh, it's not popular for one to um, to take a stand, then um, we want to fit in. Mm -hmm. We want to fit in. But it's OK to be um, peculiar. I may be getting into uh, a scripture that, you know, I may share a little bit down uh, the line, but the scripture um, says that, you know, we, we're holy, we're peculiar, we're chosen, we're a different type of people. And then um, oftentimes, um, children of God, we already know that there's something different about us. And we stick out like a sore, sore thumb, but we would rather continue to be in that uncomfortable spot and move along with the crowd and do the things that the crowd does, rather than to be formed and, and um, um, according to uh, God's purpose and according to his will. And, uh, you know, and, and in sharing that, um, it, it is uh, it's a lonely road sometimes. Um, Allison Williams says believers need to live in the world while not being of the world. That's that. I like that. Um, the 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 uh, translation that she gave on um, being, we must be um, conformed not to the world, but we must be different. Um, and we must be able to take our position of being different and knowing that we, we have a specific purpose. I think you can probably be thankful. You always have a story. <laughs> and I think you can probably be, be very thankful uh, for the correction that you receive. Mm -hmm. And, and that's a lot, that's a lot of things, uh, a lot of, um, our issue too, uh, with society, as far as, um, how we are, uh, how our, how the world is being shaped right now. We don't have enough people to dive into the word to really know that correction is needing to be given. Yeah. And so when, when we say crisis, I'm going to go down a little list of things. And then what what I would encourage you to do, and I do this for myself, is just kind of search yourself as, as I say this. So what about our identity um, is in crisis? What about our identity is in crisis? We are trying to fit in, one. We are trying not to lose relevance. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that with the with the social media, people are doing anything and everything to get likes because that makes you feel relevant when our relevance is not supposed to come from a like our relevance comes from christ right um instability in our qualities so we we no longer um we no longer know what's right and what's wrong it's like one day this is okay the next day this is okay the next day this is okay and for me i don't know about you but for me the standard is the word of god if the word says yay then it's yay if the word says nay then it's nay and whether i'm living up to the standard or not the word is still the standard mm -hmm. if the word says something i'm not going to try to make it pliable and bend it and fix it and change it so that it fits me i'm the one that needs to bend and shake and turn so that I am complying to the word of God. So again, whether I'm meeting the standard or not, it doesn't change the standard. There's still a standard. Right. I and like stability, um, instability in our beliefs. And I see this, Dora, I don't know about you. And 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 you know, I think that you're 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 in the south and it's part of the Bible belt. But here in California, where we are not, um, 
it, we have instability in our beliefs. So one day, you know, somebody believes in Jesus. And then the next day they believe in the universe. And then the next day, if the Holy Spirit is talking or the Holy Spirit is moving, and then the next day it's your energy and energy is moving and you have this energy and this energy spoke to me and the universe is blessing me. The scripture says that in the last days that we would worship the creation more than the creator. Right. I don't know what you understand about creation, but I believe that the universe is a part of the creation. So the universe, you know, I, just that's a whole nother message. But instability in our beliefs, right? Instability in our personalities. One day you're up, one day you're down. There was this uh, really popular thing that was uh, try Jesus, but don't try me. We're supposed to be Jesus in the earth. We're supposed to be his body. So if you can, how can we try Jesus, but don't try me? Like that's what the world says. And so that's what the world, how they believe. And it's all about not knowing who you are. Um, and then um, the trend is leading to instability in our futures. It's leading to instability with our children and our children's children, where they won't know the difference. They won't know um, if you're supposed to thank the creation or if you're supposed to thank the universe or if you're supposed to thank the Lord. And it all comes from something like I just said my dad did, teaching you who you are. Um, Carla said um, a double-minded, being double-minded, it's like, you know, there's so much instability and a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Yes. But once you have a concrete understanding of your idea, who you are, then you won't be tossed to and fro with every wind and every doctrine, with every fad and every movement, you will be rooted and grounded in who he has ordained and called for you to be. You have anything to add to that, Dewana? Um, Actually, no. No, I don't. Okay. And then I'm going to turn it over to you, but there's just one more thing that I want to say. Sometimes we focus on our actions. Our actions are not the thing that's going to produce our being or our character. Our characters are supposed to produce our being. So who you are, the core of your being, the core of who you are, are the core of your beliefs, the core of your values, the core of your spirit, man, is going to produce actions. Meaning if you if you're a believer, there there's some fruit that grows on the tree of a believer. A believer looks a certain way, acts a certain way. Right now we have everybody um, saying, hey, queen, good morning, queen, a grand rising queen and a hey, king. But you know what? A queen acts a certain way. A queen talks a certain way. A queen looks a certain way. A queen has strengths. Oh, God. A lot of people don't like to think about that, Dewana. A queen or a king, there are limitations. There are restraints of what you can do and what you cannot do. Mm. And so if that's who you are, and if we put it in the vernacular of the word of God, we are a royal priesthood. So this royal priesthood should look like something, should yeah. talk like something, should yeah. act like something. Ooh. And it's not try Jesus, but not me. It's not um, you mess with this and you're going to see this come out of me. Huh? What? What is that? But all of that is because who you are in Christ is not rooted and grounded and flowing out of your spirit man. That's the last, that's what I wanted to add to that, Dewana. Yes, that's awesome. And so in talking about um, our identity, um, you know, there's a sameness. If we go back and we think about uh, God making us in his image and making us in his likeness, uh, when you think about that, you know, you, you did well in giving us um, the definitions, but there's a, the, you know, like the sameness or, um, or the likeness. Um, that that's the that's the expectation. Um, yeah, we there may have been the fall, but there's still the expectation for us to be able to um, move in the likeness of who who God is to be able to mirror who he is um, because the Holy Spirit is um, deposited 
um, on the inside of us, you know, that sameness. When I think about um, that sameness, that means that, um, you know, he doesn't find a robbery for me to um, go through identity development. Because I want to pose a question here. If you were living your authentic self, if you were living who you know that God uh, deposited on the inside of you, what would you be doing with your life right now? If you begin to really embrace who you are because of what God deposited on the inside of you, would you be, what would you be producing? What would you be developing? Uh, let's talk about some, some um, identity um, development. What's in a name? Um, you know, he called you great. He called you fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a uniqueness and there's a purpose that's assigned. You know, there's the, the providence of God where um, um, in, in the scripture that I shared before. Um, um, let me get to let me get to my notes so I can get back to that scripture. But where he was dealing with us while we were in our in our mom's womb. That's the providence of God. That's him being able to, to see things all the way through to fruition. Mm -hmm. God has um, an assignment. And in the most famous um, um, name situations, God is making a point about the individual concern. He's memorializing our spiritual accomplishments, meaning that he's expecting us to walk in the spirit, not in the flesh, walk in how he has designed us to walk in. We can't do, we can't do it on our own. We cannot do it on our own. Um, and so our spiritual, our spiritual potential is a blessing from God, but we've got to know that we can, that we need to um, develop that spiritual potential, that there's um, identity development that we need to um, partner with when it comes to God and knowing who you are. Psalms 8 and 4 says, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visited him? Psalms 84 and 4 says that. Well, he was, my, he was mindful of us um, when, when we were nothing, when we were being created, he was already mindful, already mindful of, of us and that he had a purpose and a plan for us um, to walk out. And then Psalms 139 and 14 says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are the works and that my soul knoweth. Well, I'm going to stop right there, um, Yumika, and just allow us to have some dialogue and conversation because do you do you know that you have been um assigned not you personally but our viewers mm -hmm. our listeners those that will come across this this post you have been assigned to break generational curses off of the life of your family because when you step into your into into who you are and and who you know, who you are, you begin to stop the curses um, that tend to plague your family. No more, uh, no more addiction, no more divorces in the family because there's a because your your life is hinged on the promise. I can't um, I can't express enough how important it is for you to get in love with the authentic person that God has designed you to be because there is an important work for you to do. Mm -hmm. um, get to know who you are. Get to know who you are. And I'm, I'm going to stop right there and we're going to go to the next spot, guys. We're trying to stay within our time within our time frame. So that's why I stopped my I stopped my thought right there. <laughs> you know, I, I think that there is nobody better to look at um to get to know who you are um than Jesus. And when you look at him, Jesus was um Jesus was our example. And he came in the form of a flesh, the form of flesh 
to let us know what's attainable in the flesh. A lot of times we like to say, oh, but you know, he had the spirit of God and you know, he was God in the flesh. What, what do you think that when you receive the Holy Spirit that's dwelling inside of you? So there's a concrete in knowing. And the thing that, um, that I love about Jesus is that he got, he, he took out time. He, he caught himself away. He pulled himself away. And then he found out who he was from God himself. You know, the scripture in Matthew, Matthew 3, 16, where John the Baptist was baptizing Jesus. And then God said, when he came up, this is my beloved son. He, um, he solidified who Jesus was right then and there. And so my admonishment and my encouragement to us all is to be still. The world is so busy. Everything is pulling and calling and demanding. And you just have to take some time and still away and allow God to speak into your spirit, man, your purpose, your destiny, because there are, there are basic things. There are things that are that are in the word that as a believer, you are. You are the head and not the tail. You are a royal priesthood. You are accepted in the beloved. There, the word of God is your guideline for knowing who God made you as a believer. But to give that personal purpose word over your life, you got to pull away and you got to spend some time in the presence of the father so he can say, this is Allison, my beloved daughter whom I have called to serve the masses. And this is how I'm going to use her to do it. This is how I'm going to use you to do it. Because then you have your, 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 uh, your guy and you have your goal and anything other than that is just a distraction. Anything other than that is the enemy coming to steal your purpose. We don't have to be a master of all these different trades. There is something specific that God has given you to do. There is something specific that God has called you to do. So he said to, to Jesus, this is my beloved son. Mm -hmm. So he not only to Jesus, but to those who were around and who heard it with, with John the Baptist. So before you can confer with others, before you can ask, um, Dewana, what do you think about me? Dewana, what do you think my purpose is? Prophet McKenzie, hopefully we don't know a Prophet McKenzie because I just made up a name, but Prophet McKenzie, what is God saying to you um, about me? I had, Dewan and I were laughing when we were preparing for this. I don't know how many of you remember this cartoon. It was Tom and Jerry and um, there was a duck and the duck got separated from his family and the duck was walking up to everybody and he was saying, are you my mama? And he went to a dog, are you my mama? You know, and he was asking, are you my mama? And he went to everybody and he ended up with a, a pool of swan at the end, these black swan. And he was this little yellow duck and he, he just had the wrong identity. He couldn't even um, do what he was purposed to do, whatever that is as a duck, because he's over here swimming with black swan thinking that this one is his mom. But then at one point, um, a bunch of ducks uh, swam by and he's like, they look like me, they crack like me, this is my family. And he veered off and he went with them. So the oh, let me tell you something. I can't tell you what your purpose is. Dewana can't tell you what your purpose is. Um, some people get insight, but for me, and this is, this is one of the things that my dad taught me too. Um, it, before anybody can speak over you and you just receive it and run with it, you have to allow God to speak mm -hmm. into you. You have to. So when somebody else says something, it's just a confirmation of what you already know you're anointed right. and you're called and your purpose to do. Do you agree with that, Dewana? I do. I agree wholeheartedly um, with that. And I see that um, Carla Johnson um, indicated that uh, she would be serving others and would have a street. Uh, she would be fully in, in the street ministry and out mm -hmm. of the four walls of the church. And so um, I guess the thing that I'm so passionate about knowing who you are, because there are so many um, internal 
um, there are so many external factors that affect our internal factors and it strips away it strips away um the 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 thing that uh god placed on the inside of us yes it's it strips away um the thing that god placed on the inside of us those um external factors uh take away the eternal things that god deposited on the inside of us and then what are those external things that can be voices that you things that you hear from other people things that we tell ourselves I, I can't remember if it's, if it's this broadcast or my Thursday night broadcast where I began to say we are our first point of rejection. And when we don't know who we are, we constantly beat ourselves down and we and we feel like we don't measure up to what God is calling us to do, what God is calling us to do. And so the challenge is, as you make a stated, steal yourself. And when you steal yourself. You declare the word over your life and it affirms who God is actually calling you to be. And then no one can snatch that from you, not even the enemy himself with his with his, his with his imaginations, his tactics and with his thoughts. And so it is so important that you know who you are in this season because we have a world that is so scattered and that world is inclusive of our younger generation, our X and Yers that really need to know God in a major way. Mm -hmm. And so we got to get to the point to where we are no longer allowing the uh, external factors to impact the internal thing that God has put on the inside of us. Yeah. And um, I don't, you know, there's just, it's so much that I just want to get across to the viewers about knowing who you are. It's going to change your whole life. It's going to change your whole makeup because you have people that that's assigned to you. You have sons and daughters that's been assigned to you. The world is groaning for the manifestation, even of us, the sons and daughters of God that are not fully walking in our purpose because we don't know who we are. Yeah. We're afraid to claim it. Mm -hmm. We've got to claim it and we've got to embrace it. Yes. And we have to walk in it. Yes. And one of the things that the, um, when we talked about, when we talked about Jesus, um, there's a scripture and I'm going to pull it up for you that I want to read in Matthew 16 and 14. And it says, uh, Jesus was asking his circle, the disciples, who do men say, who do men say that I am? And it says in Matthew 16 and 14, and they answered, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or just one of the prophets. And then he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, the son of the living God. And so one of the things that I want to point out in that is that before you can ask again, anybody, who am I? You have to be concrete and you have to know who you are. Because when Jesus asked that question and they began to say, some say you're John the Baptist. Oh, well. Oh, maybe am I John the Baptist? Others say you're Elijah. Oh, maybe I'm Elijah. You know, God said that Elijah would come back. Or still, some say you're Jeremiah. If you don't know who you are, you will be tossed with every wind and doctrine. Yeah. You will be tossed with every new thing. You will be tossed with every idea. The enemy can come and plant all kinds of seeds and have you completely off course. But the only reason Jesus could ask that question is because he knew who he was. And then the other thing here is that you have to have people around you who yes. know who you are. Absolutely. You have to have people around you that can encourage you in your purpose. You have to have people around you that have um, identified what, how the Lord wants to move in you, how the Lord wants to use you so that even if they see you getting off track, they can say, thou art Allison, the one who was called to serve others. Thou art Carla, the one who was called to street ministry. You have to have people. I have a friend who we have been friends. Her name is Sharon Redman. We have been friends for over 25 years and she know she knows if I'm off. She knows if I'm on. She knows if we're in church. And for some reason, people love to call me out and they want to pray for me and lay hands and prophesy. It doesn't even matter the service all the time. And she knows mm, that's on. Mm, uh, that's a little yeah no because she and she can and, and she does. 
If I'm sitting and I'm doing nothing and I'm idle concerning my purpose, I'll get a phone call from her. So what are you doing concerning this? What are you doing concerning this that the Lord spoke over you? What are you doing to put that? You got to have people around you to encourage you, to build you up in the right things, in your purpose. That's you great, you mean. Marijuana? That's great, you Mika. I love it. That that is awesome. That that is uh, that is so on point. That's so on point. And having the people on your team that know, and it's got to be people that want to see you move in your purpose. You yeah. know. So yeah. that all of that has to do with uh, having the people on your team. It's got to be the right people, um, yeah. the people that want to see you authentically succeed in what God has called you to do. Yeah. And that makes a, a very, very big difference. And it's a big deal um, to be in that place. Yeah. Um, so can I say one more thing? Absolutely. And I want to speak to um, speak to the viewers tonight. If you are in a position where you feel like your life is hanging in the balance and you don't know um, or you feel like you don't, you feel like you you know, but your life is hanging in the balance because if you move to the left or to the right, um, you may feel like you may be disappointing uh, some people. You may be disappointing someone or it's, it's going to basically shift uh shift your life for the better for you because you're being obedient but then you have transition uh issues that you may have to deal with mm -hmm. trust god yeah get in that still place allow god to uh continue the identity development on the inside of you yes. you are not your job you're not your career you are you are not uh even though you are mother and father you're not your role you are not um you are not your um you're not your title in ministry you've got to be in purpose in order to feel like your life is being fulfilled and that you're doing what god has actually called you to do you are none of those things and many of you have made um some very very great um, some very good comments and we didn't get to um, actually put a lot of those on the on the screen tonight but you've got to uh, be obedient to what God has called you to do and we're going a little bit longer tonight because I want to drive home exactly um, why um, walking in who actually God has called you to be it's going to uh, release some strongholds from over your life. You're going to be able to walk in joy. You're going to be able to walk in peace. You're going to be able to walk in the power of of the uh, of, of the Holy Spirit. You're going to be able to speak and heal others because you're walking in your purpose and living a God authentic life is right where God wants you to be. He is a fulfiller of His word and a fulfiller of His promises, and it is so important. You have nothing to lose. You have nothing to be afraid of because your entire life will be blessed and will be changed as a result of you doing exactly what God has called you to do. Those things are good, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of those things, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of those things will be added unto you. It'll be an addition, but it won't be who you are. You make up. I, I just uh, I just would like for you to walk away and amen. You know, it's never too late. I love the fact that God is a redeemer of the time. Yes. So even if you feel like you've wasted time, you've wasted years. Um, he said that he will restore what the caterpillar and the canker worm. He will restore what the enemy tried to steal from you. So it's never too late to begin to search out, to begin to seek him, to begin to find out what your purpose is and walk in it. I mean, you look at the men and women of the, the in the scriptures, you know, um, Abraham, look at his age when he finally, when the light finally came on and he began to walk in his purpose. It's never too late for you to do what God has called you to do. And so get away, still away from the noise, from the voices, 
from the influences of the world, from the, the, the search to fit in, from the search to be relevant on social media, which is a false reality. Get away, steal away, spend some time, journal, let him, the Holy Spirit talk to you. Get, get away to spend time with him to find out who you are. First, who the word says you are, like Dewana said, you can speak that over your life. And then who God has spoke to you, what your purpose is. And then you can begin to walk in that, begin to declare it, begin to live it and have those guides where you have some guidance, some restraints, some uh, a goal to get towards. And it's never too late to walk in the purpose of God. So we hope that you have... Um, that you have gained something tonight. We hope that you are encouraged that uh, that you that you can do this no matter no matter your age. I don't know why I keep saying that over and over, but no matter your age, God is a redeemer. I don't care how old you were when he when he spoke it to you. Maybe it's for me too. <laughs> But I don't care how old you were when he spoke it to you. And maybe you got off track. Maybe you got hurt in, in, in some kind of way and you, you walked away or whatever the case may be. But today God is saying, I'm standing here. My arms are open wide. And just like the prodigal son, the prodigal son didn't just run back to the father. The father began to run to the prodigal son. Yeah. You guys can run and meet each other in the middle and find out your purpose and begin to walk in it. Because like Dewana said, you have a mother maybe that's tied to it, a father, a brother, a sister, a cousin, a neighbor that's tied to you walking in your purpose. And all it takes from God is one word. It, it don't take him a lot to move to work. It simply just it takes one word from the Lord. So be be blessed. Be encouraged. Know that it's not too late. Know that you have a purpose and seek God to find out what that is. Begin to walk in it, declare it over your life um, so that you can leave this earth empty, empty yes. purpose. Yes. Not full of untapped purpose. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Awesome. And so tonight we're going to um, share confessions. I prayed over these confessions. Um, I, I toiled over these confessions because I know how important they are. And uh, we're going to share these confessions. And thank you guys for hanging in there. We know that we're on a little longer, but we just felt that I've just been feeling um, the urgency of sharing this message tonight. And uh, for everybody that will bypass this broadcast, please do what God tells you to do. Be obedient. Just do it. That's the word. Just do it. Just do it. But trust God and do what he tells you to do. And so we're going to put the confessions up and we're going to read those. So Dewana will read the confession and you and I, the viewers, and I will uh, repeat after her and Amen. declare this over our lives. Amen. Amen. Confession one says, um, God declares himself maker of all things. I declare that I am the good and perfect, complete being that comes from him. Yes. And that declaration is based on uh, Ecclesiastes 3.11a, Mark 7.37a, and Colossians 1.17. So let's go ahead and declare that also. God declares himself maker of all things. I declare that I am the good and perfect, complete being that comes from him. Amen. Confession two says, I am transparent before God and openly declare that I am no longer held captive to vain actions and thoughts that leave me empty and void of life. I declare that I am free to be authentically me and know that I am hidden in Christ and not from Christ, Hebrews 4, 13. I am transparent before God and openly declare that I am no longer held captive to vain actions and thoughts that leave me empty and void of life. I declare that I am free to be authentically me 
and know that I am hidden in Christ and not from Christ. Confession three, God has given me clarity of thought and wisdom. Therefore, I declare that I have a strategy and can overthrow the tactics of the enemy. I have the power to control my thought life, what I speak and will not allow negativity to penetrate the walls of my heart. Second Corinthians 10 and five. God has given me clarity of thought and wisdom. Therefore, I decree that I have strategy and can overthrow the tactics of the enemy. I have the power to control my thought life, what I speak, and will not allow negativity to penetrate the walls of my heart. I am who God says I am. I declare that I am chosen, holy, royal, and daily declare his light over my life. And that's 1 Peter 2 and 9. I am who God says I am. I declare that I am chosen, holy, royal, and daily declare his light over my life. And confession five, I can trust in the Lord with my life. He is my confidant. He orders my steps. He keeps me strong. Proverbs 3 and 26. I can trust the Lord with my life. He is my confidant. He orders my steps and he keeps me strong. Amen. We believe that we receive the word of the Lord that is spoken over our life. And I like what Carla said at the end. Hey, everyone, share this. Push that share button. Go ahead and do us a favor and push the share button. Um, we also want to let you know that if you have a prayer request, we, we yeah. pray. And so if you yeah. have a prayer request, if you have um, something that you want to uh, hear us bring up as a topic that you want to have a conversation about, just go ahead and send us an email to um, let's talk about it 117 at gmail.com. If you have questions, prayer requests, suggestions, if you if you have questions that we didn't even talk about, you want to know how to get closer to the word. I mean, to the Lord, you want to know how to read your word, whatever it may be. Send us an email and we will definitely um, get back to you. Cool. And. um Yes, you are welcome, Allison Williams. And we thank you. We appreciate you for, for engaging with us on tonight. And uh, and we thank God that you were blessed. You were blessed. And we will, Miss um, Johnson, we will pray for your children, Rachel, yes. uh, Delilah, and David. We will do that. We'll, and, and, we'll pray for them. And our we have one announcement um, that we'd like to share. Uh, we are moving to um, the Let's Talk About It platform on um, Facebook and YouTube. We will no longer divide um, our audiences. So we'll be sending out invitations for you to join the Let's Talk About It Facebook page. We have a single uh, Facebook page now and it's at Let's Talk About It 177. And we'll also be sending out invites and lights, uh, requests for you to uh, join the page. And from there, um, you will uh, receive uh, motivation from the both of us, from uh, you, Mickey and I. It's really going to be a special thing. It's going to be a great thing. Um, God is enlarging our territory and we are definitely excited about it. And I want to, you know, something that came to mind when um, you, Mika, was talking at the end and. And I've been talking about being obedient to what the Lord has called you to do. Um, we connected because of God's obedience. We connected because of God's obedience. And so it's been um, it's been rewarding. And so now he's expanding our territory and we're ready to move and go full throttle in what the Lord has called us to do. And so he'll 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 begin to show you multiple things that you are to do in order to uh, build his kingdom and to encourage others to become closer um, to him. And so look for that, look for that invitation from let's talk about it. Uh, what was that? Let's talk about it. One seven, seven. Yes. Um, on Facebook and go to our YouTube, go to the YouTube 
go to the YouTube page like that. We um, we want to um, move our, our YouTube page as well. And so go to the, the YouTube um, if this is encouraging to you and we need to get it into um, the feeds and the views of others. Be sure to uh, go to the YouTube area as well and um, and like and share that as well. Thank you guys so much. And I am praying for you all to get in the purpose of God. Amen. Have a blessed evening. Thank you.